Uh, welcome to our talk. Uh, I'm Matthias. I, oh, that's my thing there. Should not Let's do not blow up. Let's <laughs> not blow up. I'm Matthias. I go by uh, Maffintosh on Twitter GitHub. Uh, that's Matteo. Hey! And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, GraphQL today and basically how you can make it run really, really fast. Matteo, you should do the clicker. Right? Yeah, I can do the clicker. Yeah, I should do the clicker. Okay. So, hi. Um, we both work for Nearform. You've probably seen it by the nice blue t shirt. Okay. So, hey, uh, talk to us, whatever. You probably have really need too much advertisement for Nearform, so probably <laughs> you don't need this. Um, so let's go and talk a little bit more about uh, GraphQL. So you can get your, uh, your Facebook friends, right? You, there's a nice route on your app, and it's pretty common. Like, I don't know how many times I've wrote this, but whatever. Like, huge number of REST routes I've wrote along over the last few years. Uh, maybe one per day or something? I don't know. Yeah. Um, so this will return something like that, an array of objects, okay, with a lot of properties in it because, you know, it contains all our data. However, um, you know, the, uh, somebody in the mobile team came to me and said, oh, but I just need a few fields. So how do, you know, we want to say some round trip because, you know, people on L LTE you want to uh, say some bandwidth and battery and stuff. So we want to keep things uh, small, right? And, you know, uh, once upon a time, I wrote on a massive work on a massive project where all of what we were doing, we were massaging data and filtering for mobile apps. It was not nice, okay, to write this stuff. Uh, oh, hi. <laughs> um, so what you do if you want to filter some data, whatever, so what you would, if you would just want the name, you can create a new route. Get Facebook friend names. Hey, and you just get your names, okay? Or you can just add a query string parameter to this. However, all of this has a problem. And the fact is, it's non-standard. So uh, what you can get is you can get your, uh, and what about if you want more than multiple routes, OK? If you want more data and you need to issue, issue two queries, maybe you want to issue two REST call at the same time. Now, all of these creates a lot of round trips and a lot of processing on your, uh, on your server, and it actually creates um, a bad user experience because, you know, all those round trips to your servers create, take some time, and, you know, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't feel good from a, a user perspective. So possibly you create a new route again called Facebook Friend and Likes, which is another... <laughs> I don't know, I many have done this type of uh, thing. We're going to run, run out of URLs really fast, basically. Hmm? We're going to run out of URLs really fast. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. whatever. Take some time to, to, to maintain all of this. So, um, so, yeah, so what can we do? Well, basically, there's this, it's not really new anymore, I guess, but, you know, recent years there's been this new thing called GraphQL. That's a tool or a language, actually, that tries to, to solve this uh, at a language level. So basically, there's a new way of expressing these things uh, much more simply so you can query JSON things much easier than you can do before. Uh, and it kind of looks like this. So let's say we wanted to have a, you know, our friends query, um, similar to the one Matteo was talking about. This is how it would look in, in GraphQL. So it's a very concise little language that's, that's if you've ever done stuff like protobuf or, or, or stuff like that, it, it has a very similar feel. So this is a, it's a query. Uh, it's called friends because that's the thing on the, on the, on the left there. And uh, you give it some input data. Input data here is my name, uh, and then you give it a filter, um, and this filter is something you have to give always, where you basically opt in to what you want to want to what you want to receive when you're getting the data. So it's a very simple way to just like get the data you want and just that data. So very concise and efficient in a in a in a nice little container. And it's it's a modern language, um, so it has stuff like type validation built in. So I don't know if you ever deployed servers back in the day without JSON schema. You know all the problems that creates. Uh, we do a lot of security stuff also. And, yeah, you know, whatever. It's like, it's, uh, 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 please validate your data, okay? Whenever you receive data, validate what is please, coming in. Please validate. It's, uh, we should have a t-shirt. Otherwise, a lot of people will be happy that you haven't validated your data, and you really don't want to make those people Well, it does make, make security jobs, you know? So <laughs> it's awesome, awesome. Anyways, so yeah, validate your data. So of course, GraphQL being a modern thing has, has uh, validation built in. So you, what you do is, you, whenever you have a complex type, you, just, you define your type uh, in a schema like this. Uh, a friend has a name. What is the name? It's a string. It has probably a country where the friend is from, also a string, an age, that's an integer, et cetera, et cetera. Again, similar to JSON schema, protobuf, if you've ever done any stuff like that. 
And then obviously also you have to define your query. So basically you define your query in the bottom here. Um, <clears throat> and you know you define what your query is called, uh, its friends here, and what the input uh, type is and the output type. So you know, it's again pretty simple, you know, pretty simple to, def to define. Um, and then if you wanted to e execute multiple queries, like Matteo was talking about, <laughs> um, you gotta stand on top of each other for that <laughs> one too. Oh, you know, yeah, I can't even. Um, you would just write two to the server, so it's very easy, and the server would just execute both. Uh, and GraphQL, just being a language, there's nothing magic to it. It, it does, it's not like it can somehow figure out how to execute a friend, so you still have to provide an implementation to do this on the server in the form of a JavaScript function that you pass in uh, on your server that would execute this for you. But it's just like a way to basically pack this data down and, and, and send it. <coughs> Uh, so you might notice here that on a friends query like this, you know, as the name, I put in Matthias as a string and send that over the wire. That's not very efficient because we're basically putting in variable data. Um, so it has this thing called variables where you can, um, instead of hard coding your values inside your, your queries, you can send your variables on the side and then you can use these dollar, uh, this dollar syntax here and then basically inject variables in, uh, which is really nice because then you get rid of all the you know, uh, injection attacks that you might know from SQL and stuff like that. And so it's a very nice little, little way, and this is obviously how you should do it in, in real life. Uh, just have your queries be static, and, and your variables should be sent on the side. So, um, yeah, also, uh, GraphQL has a really rich ecosystem. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you know, but it's a really popular thing called Apollo. Uh, it's, a, it's basically a, a framework uh, that allows you to get up and running really, really fast in, uh, in GraphQL. Kind of looks like this. I think this is your code material, right? Yeah, I think it, I wrote this. No, I didn't wrote Apollo. I just wrote this thing. <laughs> uh, so it's basically just a really easy way to just you know, require something, pass in a schema, and, 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 and uh, get up and running. Uh, it it like kind of binds an uh, HTTP server and all that kind of stuff. A lot of people use it. It has a very popular uh, following online. Uh, and it's nice because it, it makes prototyping easy. So basically, uh, you know, it gets you from having nothing and having something really, really fast. However, GraphQL comes at a cost, as everything. Whenever you introduce a new abstraction in your, uh, uh, in your application, uh, can be a new framework, can be a new library, everything that you add comes at a cost in terms of overhead, in terms of latency, in terms of throughput. The more things you do on that request cycle, the more it will take to respond. So, um, uh, in the last few months, uh, we have been, uh, we are uh, performance uh, experts, and we have been contacted by several uh, of our clients. Uh, re they reached out to us because they felt that, they moved to GraphQL and everything was fine because of the fantastic developer tools and that in fact you can debug your query. Uh, in that fantastic Graph IQL editor. Mm, oh yeah, it's, it's, really nice. it's, it's fantastic, really nice. it's fantastic. Uh, however, they felt that when, once they put all of that in production, it felt that it, they were under, it was underperforming, underperforming compared to REST. And you know, we, we were like, oh, okay, maybe we can investigate. And we started uh, using uh, our tool called Node Clinic, and you can check it out, clinicjs.org. It's a suite of tools to do some performance debugging and performance uh, um, uh, and solving performance issues in your, your Node.js. I actually also use uh, TensorFlow in Clinic. Yeah, we use TensorFlow as well in Clinic, so oh, hey. Hit that bingo word, that's cool, yeah. Um, so uh, how you use it? Well, there is a Clinic's a collection of tool. I will go to talk, talk about Clinic Flame, which we have just released a new version today, <coughs> so hey. <laughs> Half an hour ago, right? Half an hour ago, yeah. yeah. yeah that's awesome. hey. Um, so what you do, you run Clinic Flame, and you pass uh, your node executable and the file you want to run, and then you can run uh, a load testing tool like AutoCannon to actually test this. This is a nice, simple query that add two integers together, very not very fancy. Yeah, so like the tool, the idea here is we just want to measure like the overhead of GraphQL, right? We don't want to measure how fast we can add two numbers together. Then, then you should yeah. talk to Benedict about that. But yeah, no, wanna, that's, that's for Benedict. That's so Benedict if you figure are, out. We just want to measure like what's the overhead of actually, you know, receiving these requests, passing them, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so basically we've sent up this very tiniest thing in GraphQL that we could to measure the overhead of passing in a GraphQL uh, 
uh, a GraphQL, uh, the GraphQL code. So um, this was the result. I hope you can all see this. Can you see this? I can see this very well here. <laughs> um, so anyway, what you can see here is that uh, on, on, the, on the left part, there is a thing highlighted in white, which is, uh, it's, um, it shows a method called enter. And you know, we were kind of wondering what this is, because it is enter, and then if we can actually, well, I, I'm not doing it, but <laughs> I, second time I went there. Um, there is enter, and then there is another method uh, in a thing called visitor, and, or which is also the second top method there. Oh. So basically, just like quick, this is a flame graph, and the, the brighter the color is, the more expensive the code is to run. That's like yep. basically the visualization. The more time is spent, and the more it's hot. Um, so uh, yeah, I was one. We were wondering why is this, and there was a. And if you go at the bottom of the stack, you can see a thing called validate. So what is validate? Like why are we spending time in validating? Oh yeah, we need to validate our input, right? Yeah, sure. But why is that this happening? So, so we took this, you know, and the cool thing about a flame graph um, and other performance metrics uh, is that it really helps you, you know, navigate your code base and find out. Where, where's the problem, or like if there's a problem. We love problems because we, you know, we love performance. So yeah. if there's no problems, there's nothing to fix, then, you know, then our job is done, so that's kind of boring. So uh, every time something shows up in a flame graph, we get really excited. Uh, so basically, you know, we took that code and, and we looked at it, and it turns out that every time you receive a request uh, over, um, over GraphQL, the first thing the server does is it has to first, you know, you get that query thing in, right? It has to first pass that query and passing a query is, is, is basically a compile step. So if you ever compiled using Babel or you know, TypeScript or whatever, it basically takes you know, uh, your input code and transforms it into something called an abstract syntax tree, which is just another word for a huge uh, JavaScript object that you can work with in JavaScript. So you don't want to work with strings, you want to work with objects. Right? Uh, it has to do that on every request. This is not a cheap operation because you know parsing can be complex and stuff like that. Um, at the same time, it's not something that you know, your computer is going to spin for hundreds of seconds to do. But you know, in the, in the sense of performance, it's expensive. So then it first has to do that, then it gets the uh, syntax tree out. It actually also has to validate that syntax tree that it's, you know, because you, know, you can easily write very bad GraphQL that's not, uh, that's not valid. Then once you have that, we're ready to then walk that tree, you know, go through that tree, see what's in there. And only then uh, can we validate the input and execute the query. And this is on every request, right? Every request we have to do this, even if it's just like, hello world. So, you know, kind of kind of pricey. So luckily for us, when we saw this, the solution was really, really simple. It's just like, yeah, you know what? Uh, the queries that come in, GraphQL queries, they're usually pretty static because, you know, the variables are sent outside, right? So what do we do? Well, we just cache it, put a bunch of caching on it. That's like the solution to everything. You know, we want to be a performance expert just like throw caching at things and see if it's fast. So caching is actually the, 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 the solution magic. to all the problems. All the problems. However, it's actually one of the other things in computer science. So, you know, It's both the solution off. and the problem. Often. It's also a solution right, right. and a problem. So, hey, I don't know. So, uh, don't try this at home. Matteo, how do we do this in practice? So, um, we started uh, uh, reasoning about this, and we started looking, can we actually like, implement some caching strategy? Like, there is this massive, uh, abs this big abstract syntax tree object being created, and there's all this parsing work being done, which we are doing it for every, every request. Now, in, in most um, uh, enterprise app, uh, this, this approach would work, would work well, uh, mainly because you, know, you control both the client and the server. So there is two cases for GraphQL. One is if you're building GitHub, and it has a GraphQL API, and you give this to everybody. And one case, if you're using this for writing your, uh, uh, the backend for your, for your front end, right? And you control both the client and the server, and you just want the benefits of GraphQL to speed up your development process. So in that case, in fact, you kind of, know which queries are coming through. And in fact, there are several, like you, you can see that there are several optimizations uh, around. So yeah, we started looking at this. And uh, what we are doing is we implemented an LRU cache to, uh, uh, to cache this table queries. So if you eat the same query more, more than once, we are not really doing the same work, right? You have seen that this GraphQL is this concept of like prepare statement, prepare query, whatever you want mm -hmm. to call them, parameters. So basically, if you keep your query stable and then you just change the 
the, the parameters, then this query can actually be cached. And we actually like, looked a little bit at this, at this problem. And yeah, well, we, we wrote a little tiny uh, implementation because even thinking about stuff doesn't really like, we don't think really, we just code. Write code, right? Yeah, we just write See code. what comes out of it. Yeah, they close ourselves in a closet, <laughs> whatever. Um, you were in Argentina, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you was in Argentina, I was in Italy, so whatever. It worked out. Uh, was fun. <laughs> um, so uh, we wrote this tiny module to experiment with this called Vastify-GQL. You can try it out. It's for the Vastify web framework. Um, and this is how it looks like. So we are taking our, you define your schema, you define your solvers, and then you put like, I don't know, some headers, course, you should use course everywhere. Uh, and then there is, a, uh, you register Fastify, that's GQL, pass the schema and your solvers, and you're done, kind of. Um, so, hey, uh, and this is a result, which we were like, it was astounding compared to the, the, the difference in, 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 uh, in throughput between uh, this approach using caching and the others. So if you can't see the, the font, it's like Apollo on the left, and then it's Express GraphQL in the middle, and then the, the Fastify one on the right, using the simple framework. Again, this is just benching the overhead of GraphQL. Um, uh, by the way, it's not, we don't want to say anything bad about Apollo or Express GraphQL. They are fantastic tools, and all, we've done this experimentation to find out this technique, and we have found that we, if we can work with bare bone and close to the metal things, we can achieve uh, better results. However, all of what we are talking about can be applied to all these other libraries, so. There's nothing stopping all the graph from being the, like all the Yeah, bank. it's uh, all the <laughs> techniques that we are talking about can be applied everywhere. <laughs> so. Awesome, uh, yeah, so we weren't done here because like the, the flow we do as, you know, people who like to tinker with performances, once you get something that's better, it's exciting, but it's also a signal like that we, you know, went in the right direction. So you should never st stop doing performance analysis. So what we did was, you know, we took our new thing, and we, we basically said, okay, let's just run a new, new performance analysis on it using Clinic Flame and see what comes out. Maybe there's other bottlenecks, you never know. Um, and this uh, flame graph came out. And the really interesting thing about this flame graph, which is a little bit uh, hard maybe to see, is that there is a big area uh, over here in the middle, with a ton of stuff happening still. Uh, a big cluster. Yeah, and the reason why it's not, so the, most of the majority of the time is spent maybe in uh, uh, Fastify itself because the, our code is already fast. However, if you see in that, in that big block, what you can see, it, you see it that way, very fragmented, because there are a lot of functions being called within GraphQL itself. So there is a tiny bit of time being spent in all the functions, but it actually adapts significantly so, visually. So basically, you know, what they uh, taught us when reading through it is that, yeah, we're caching the parsing and we're par uh, caching the validation of the parsing, but we're still walking the AST on every request. And surprisingly, walking the AST is still a bottleneck uh, because just, you know, that's what's left. So how can we fix this? And we decided to throw some mad science at it because that's what we like to do. <laughs> and uh, do some on the, the flight code generation. So if you don't know, JavaScript is one of the best languages for doing on the flight code generation because it's memory don't safe. Don't try this at home. It's memory safe, it has this magic thing called eval, which is like both the best thing and the worst thing about JavaScript. Uh, yeah, don't do it at home. You're gonna you know, shoot yourself in the foot. Uh, I've done that many times from experience. Uh, but when you get it to work, it's just fantastic. The nicest thing about doing this with GraphQL is that you have already a nice big step mm -hmm. of validating your AST and everything. So basically, you have, it's, our, that data is already super validated. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. it's actually safe. So uh, we basically decided to implement a JIT compiler for um, GraphQL. And it kind of works like this, where you, know, you have a query coming in, and you first, when a query is coming in, you first decide if it's, if it's super cold. If it's super cold, meaning like it's being hit once per hour or something, right? You just interpret it once in a while with the normal GraphQL way. If it's, if it's kind of warm, but still cold, like being used a lot, then we start to cache it, like we just talked about before with you know, the, the approach we just talked about, caching the AST, all this stuff. It's really good, really fast. But if it's super warm, it's hot, um, being, it's being used all over again, then we actually take this, uh, the query, we run it through our compiler that basically take the, the, takes the, the query and compiles it to JavaScript, just a simpler JavaScript, that uh, V8 is really good. We basically hand the problem over to Benedict. Yeah, take, exactly, like, so take <laughs> Benedict, hey. And then, and then we take credit for it, which is really nice. Um, and then compile it to JavaScript, and then you know, V8 will kick in and compile it to whatever machine code is doing some black magic. That's and really, really fast. kicks in. So it's like a double JIT step. 
Um, and the car looks like this. This is like just an example of what the code looks like that's generated from a compiler. I think this is actually the, the symbol add query. So it just you know, takes in some, some uh, a GraphQL query and, and uh, spits out a, a function that's really simple from a, a, a VM point of view. It has like all static values and stuff like that. Uh, and the results were really uh, surprising to me. Uh, so it, this is like even faster than just casting it. It was around like, I think it's like 20, 30%, something like that, yeah. faster. In some cases, on some queries, it was like 2x faster. In some cases, it was like a little bit the faster. Com the complex of the query, the better it gets, more or less. Yeah, yeah. so the more, that's a, re and that's a really nice property, actually. So basically, yeah, the more complex your, you know, your operation is, the faster it is. Uh, because it, you know, V8 is just really, really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, more or less. <laughs> that's nice. And it's also all based on uh, async await, which we we have just learned that it got super fast. Yeah, so, and it just gets faster and faster. So that's super exciting, uh, something where you're still tinkering with, we haven't released it yet, because again, uh, there's some major security implications when we get this wrong, so we don't wanna like encourage people to like leak all their data by accident. More or less. But it's really exciting stuff, and, and uh, um, you should come talk to us if you wanna lo learn more about that. So yeah. So, um, just to recap a little bit, using our, uh, our research, uh, we showed out that, in fact, GraphQL is, can actually become very competitive instead of rolling out your uh, REST endpoints. And especially if we compare uh, the, uh, the actual end results ver versus the awesome developer experience and the speed of release that you get, is actually a very good combo. So I would encourage you, all of you to try this thing out. Um, uh, also, I would like to say that we have a, a full workshop on performance this afternoon come at uh, 2 p.m. I don't know which room, but you know, you, we'll find you. Somewhere. <laughs> uh, somewhere, I mean, around this, this here. You see the both of us, so whatever. And uh, uh, which is about a, a new way to provide a sync activity in Node.js, which we go through the clinic suit, suite of tools. The flame and stuff also. The flame stuff. Yeah. The, uh, another fantastical UI called BattleProf, and they will be kind of half of the team in there. Um, so I would like to thank you for, for coming for, for, for <laughs> this. And uh, yeah. yeah, thank That's you very it. much. Thank you. <laughs>